So we're going to ask you to stand this morning as Mr. Greg Bellingham comes to lead us in a couple of hymns of the faith, standing together, sharing our hearts in song together. When the roll is called up yonder, I hope to see all of you there. Let's sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Sing it out. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there good singing church next one what a friend we have in Jesus sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Precious 
Savior still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. To thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. Amen. Please be seated. And this time... Doug McGee is coming to minister to you in song. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I'm tired and I'm weak and I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on through the light and take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me on though my way grows drear precious lord linger near when my strength is almost gone hear my cry hear my call take my hand lest i fall take my hand Precious Lord, lead me on For I've been shackled by a heavy burden Beneath a load of guilt and shame For then the hand of Jesus touched me now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. For something happened. And now I know he touched me, and he has made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, and since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease. To praise him, gonna shout it as eternity rolls. For he touched me, oh, he touched me, and all oh, the joy floods my soul. So something has happened now. Touch me, and he has made me whole. He touched me, and he has made me whole. Amen. And just before our praise team comes to lead you in some songs before the throne of grace this morning. Um, I know John and, and, and Krista 
put out a uh, clipboard in the back. We are expanding, trying to seek to expand our nursery ministry back to where it was with using both sides every Sunday for the toddler and the, the infant. And so um, if you want to help out with that, please sign up. We greatly appreciate it. And also on, uh, on the 18th, which is uh, next Sunday following the morning worship service, uh, Patty Gebchak will be out in the front foyer to uh, take any pictures of folks that have not yet uh, been put up on our most wanted board out in the side hall. So if you'd like to get that taken care of, several of you signed up when we had our greeting time together, and uh, we'd like to get uh, that uh, taken care of for you as soon as possible. And so at this time, let's stand together just before the message this morning as we worship him, lifting our voices in song as the lights go away. Okay. I want to do some introductions there with some of these guys. All right, well, this guy is Guy, <laughs> which is my favorite name to call people. That's easy. It's accurate this time. We got Guy, my mother Carol, uh, Jim Selhaney playing the box, and Laura on bass. <laughs> so a couple new additions, and uh, enjoy having them to worship with us. So let's continue our service and sing to the Lord. Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the father turns his face away as wounds which mark. Trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I Jesus. 
Son of heaven rose again. 
He's worthy of our praise, is he not? Amen. Well, again, we're glad you're here as we worship the Lord, the one who's worthy of our praise, creator of heaven and earth. And one day every knee will bow and tongue will confess that he indeed is Lord to the glory of the Father. Well, I want to draw your attention this morning to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. And uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 15, this is a uh, presentation uh, in regard to the children of Israel and their praise of the Lord for their recent deliverance uh, from the armies of of Egypt and uh, Pharaoh's rule. And we know the story, don't we? The account, I should say, of how they were delivered from that whole situation miraculously as the Red Sea parted. And this is kind of like many of the Psalms as well. In the Psalms, they are songs, and they are uh, areas of praise and thanksgiving uh, to the Lord for His goodness and what He's, what he's done. And so I, I want to say to you this morning that, that your God is able your God is able to do far above that which we ask or think, abundantly above all that we ask or think, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And as the children of Israel were delivered miraculously, perhaps you have found yourself singing the praises of the Lord too because He's delivered you from uh, situations that you never thought you'd get through. Good to see you, Tina. We missed you. God bless you, dear. And so, anyway, pray for Tina, transition going on in her life, and uh, don't know all the details, and and that's okay, but uh, she loves the Lord Jesus, and she's come our our way, just like many folks in the church that are new to the the church, and uh, uh, we love her already, and she's precious to us, so you pray for Tina. And uh, Bob Downey, Bob Downey back there, I see you, Bob. It wasn't, it wasn't enough for you to hobble around for a little while, but you had to get your other leg crushed. Good deal, buddy. So, yeah, he was, he was in a cast for months, and the other leg felt lonely, and so he let another car land on him. So, anyway, you can't make that stuff up, Bob. You just live the dream, don't you? So, anyway, so where were we? Oh, yes, in the book of Exodus. Here we go. So the, the, the children of Israel just delivered from... Uh, from the Egyptian rule and, and the escape, you know, kind of thing, and the, and the waters parted, and they walked across on, on dry land or dry ground, and then uh, the perfect timing of God, of course, uh, the waters closed, 
while the great massive army of Pharaoh uh, was pursuing them and, and there uh, was accomplished uh, God's deliverance of the children of Israel. And so I want to read this text with you this morning, beginning with verse number 1 of chapter number 15. And it says, When Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted in the horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. And the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. And this is my God, and I will praise him. The Father, my Father is God, and I will extol him. The Lord is a warrior, and his name is the Lord, or the Lord is his name. And Pharaoh's chariots and his armies he has cast into the sea, and the choicest of the officers have drowned in the Red Sea. The deeps overcame them, and they went down into the depths of in the depths like a stone, and the right hand of the Lord is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy, and in the greatness of your excellence, you overthrow those who rise up against you. And you send forth your burning anger, and it consumes them like chaff. And at the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up. And the flowing waters stood up like a heap, and the deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. And the enemies said, and this is what the enemies had shared, I will pursue and I will overtake, and I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be gratified against them, and I will draw out my sword, and my hand will destroy them. And you blew the wind of the sea, and it covered them, and they sank like lead in the mighty waters." Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your hand, your right hand. You ever notice that? It's always the right hand of God. That's a study in and of itself right there. You stretched out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them. And in your loving kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed in your, in your strength, you have guided them to your holy habitation. And the peoples have heard. They trembled in anguish, has gripped them in the inhabitants of uh, Philistia. And then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed, and the leaders of Moab, they trembled. The, the trembling grips them, and all the inhabitants of Canaan had melted away. Terror and dread uh, fell upon them. And by the greatness of your arm, they are motionless as stone. Until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased, you will bring them and plant them in the mount of your inheritance, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which you, your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever. For the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Miriam, the prophetess Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancing. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, the horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. And Father, we pray you'd bless your word to our hearts this morning. And we pray, God, that you would speak to us, and that you'd move by your spirit among us and in us and work through us. We thank you, Lord, for your message and song this morning. And we have much to be thankful for, and that is you above all else. You're mighty to save. You're our salvation, you're our peace, you're our strength, you're our hope, you're our promise, you're our mercy. You are our mercy seat, Lord, in time of need. And we thank you, Lord, for the deliverance of your people. We thank you for your covenant people, Israel. We thank you, God, that you've always walked with them, and may we always be a part of supporting them. And Lord, we, we thank you that we've been engrafted in your people, your church. And God, we thank you that you're our protector and you are the one who has seen us through things that we never thought we would make it through. And we're here to testify that you shall reign forever and ever victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And because you live, we too can live eternally. We love you, we praise you, we give you thanks this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 
So we're told in this text this morning that Moses and the people of Israel sang this song after they had passed through the Red Sea, after they had experienced this miraculous deliverance from the Lord and had seen uh, God destroy the Egyptian army in the midst of those very same waters. And you know, this morning, before we really get into this uh, text a little bit more, maybe you too have sung portions of this passage of Scripture without even having realized it. Maybe you have sung praises to the Lord for His deliverance. And I know this past year has been a rough year for many, you know, and, and you kind of were wondering if this was your time, you know. And uh, by the way, your time is appointed. You are not going to be taken here one day too soon or one day too late. You're going to go to be with Jesus right on time when God is finished with you here. And you're going to continue to worship Him and praise Him forever in eternity and uh, in, in a perfect presence of His holiness to, to worship Him. And you're invincible until that day. And uh, also, mentioning uh, folks this morning, if you would, continue to pray for the Asbel family as well. Joe's, Joe's mom uh, passed away uh, just about a week and a half now, and uh, we want to continue to pray for them as well. And so, um, hey, we're a needy people, aren't we? But God is a great God, and he, and he is able. He's able, and he can work through, you know, even what man intended for evil, God can use for good. And that's because the God we serve is the one who rules and reigns in the affairs of men. And so maybe you too, as we said, you've sung these praises without realizing, uh, song, uh, singing the, the, the scriptures back to the Lord or reciting them back to the Lord as an offering of thanksgiving. And God inhabits the praise of his children, by the way. And, and, and God loves to hear your voices lifted to exalt the one who is seated in the heavenlies, the one who is holy, 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 and the one whose train fills the temple, and he is worthy of our praise. And so this morning, you might, you might have uh, sung this praise uh, in verse number one, I, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, the horse and its rider he hurled into the sea. Has God ever removed an obstacle in your life or a hurdle or anything that has hindered your walk or has been a, a, a wall that may be between brothers and sisters in Christ and, and God has made a way? You know, we, we talked about Victoria this morning and, and, and her surgery and, and God's healing touch in, in her life. Nothing is too hard for our God. And we need to trust him, we need to believe him, and we need to be able to, at the end, uh, exalt him. So this song this morning is recorded in these, in these multiple verses recounting, recounting the, the many wonderful things about our, our faithful God. But none more remarkable than this third verse in your text this morning. And this statement, again, it reads, that our Lord is a warrior, and the Lord is is his name. You know, the, the Lord is many things. We, we call him in, the, in, the, uh, in Isaiah, you know, you look uh, at the, uh, the rundown of the different names given to the Lord. You know, he is, he is the mighty God. He is the Prince of Peace. He's the, he's the Counselor. He, he's all these things. But have you, ever, have you ever seen the name applied to your God as he is a warrior? And a warrior, when you think of a warrior, you think of one who fights, don't you? Well, guess who he's fighting for? He's fighting for you. He's fighting for his children. And he is doing battle in the heavenlies, in the, in the spiritual warfare, in a realm we, we don't see with the physical eye, but he is standing in the, in the courts of heaven, and he is the one who, who stands uh, ever interceding for us, and he is the one who's doing our bidding, and he is there representing us uh, as, as the, the forgiven children of God. But you'll notice this morning, very interestingly, in verse number three, note that the word Lord appears in small capital letters. And this is to remind you as you're reading this, this text and other texts that this is the covenant name of God. This is the covenant name of God that he himself, a special name that he himself revealed to his people. And that name is Yahweh. And that name basically means that he brings into existence all things that exist. Everything was created by him and for him, and nothing exists without him. So no wonder he could say to the seas, 
part or storms be still uh, or use all of the different things that he created to reveal the very Godhead that leaves man without excuse. And so he is Yahweh. He is the God of very gods who created all things and called and allowed all things to exist. And the beauty of it all in his humiliation and shame and crucifixion, he submitted himself to the very things that he created. That is great humility. You know, we talk about trying to be uh, ones who would clothe themselves in humility before we serve. Well, God humbled himself in the person of Christ, making himself of no reputation, and then he acted on the behalf of God to fulfill the plan in obedience to the Father. And so he is the one, Yahweh God, warrior God, he is the one who is given to the children of Israel this name so that they could recognize that the battle belongs to the Lord. Your battle this morning, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, your battle belongs to the Lord, and the Lord our God is fighting for you. He is fighting for you. He has taken mount upon that, that victorious uh, stallion, if you would, you know, and, and he wars on your behalf, and he fights death, hell, in the, in, in the grave, and he won that battle. And he wanted for you so that you could live as well. And so in verse number three, it is, a, it is an application that he is the one who caused all things that exist to, to have their being or have their way. And so through this miraculous event of the party of the Red Sea, they're celebrating a new revelation about God. You see, they always knew that God was strong. They always knew that God was mighty. They always knew that, that God was the God of their salvation. They always knew that God was the God uh, of their fathers. But now, in this, in this new revelation, because of this, because of this situation that they have celebrated God's deliverance, they, they come to a place where now he is also recognized as a mighty warrior. And as I said, he is the one your battle belongs to. And we need to often, don't we, we need to turn over to the Lord some of the fights that we face. And the strength is in the Lord. Your strength is not in the arm of the flesh, not in the power of your might, but in the wisdom and the mercies of God. And his deliverance is there for us. He's doing battle for you each and every day in those, in those spiritual realms. This has become a very central theme in, 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 in all of Scripture. A very central theme in the Bible, namely that the Lord fights for his people to deliver them from the enemies of their soul. In Romans, I believe it's chapter 8, forgive me if I'm wrong on the text, but the Bible says there, if God be for you, who can be against you? Well, there's a lot of, a lot of things that can be against you. But what that verse is really spelling out for you, yes, there might be enemies that mount attacks against you, but you see, the Egyptian army was an army that was of great strength and prestige and, and, uh, and, and an awesome presence, but nothing for the hand of God. And so whatever mounts against you, whatever comes against you, whatever situation you face, whatever stress you're going through in, in, in life, in comparison to the mighty hand of God, if God be for you, who can be against you? So God is the one who fights for us. The battle belongs to the Lord, and God is doing our bidding in the, in the presence of God Almighty. Notice verses uh, 6, 7, and 8. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power, and your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Oh, and by the way, this, uh, this Old Testament God you, we need to thank God that he's a God of grace and mercy and patience and long-suffering. Um, enemies of God in the Old Testament, you know, they didn't fare very well. And when God came into a place to cleanse it, there wasn't even a blade of grass left standing. The livestock, the harvest, the homes, everything destroyed and burnt to the ground. And God can do it better in restoring it and building it again. And, and so we need, we need to see God from all perspectives, don't we? I thank God today that his, his throne 
is a throne of grace right now. It's a throne of grace. We do not get what we deserve. I know what we deserve. But you know, there's coming a day when war, the warrior God is going to come and he is going to set things straight, the crooked way straight. And he is going to take vengeance on evil. And he is going to uh, take care of corruption. And he's going to take care of unfairness. No one knows unfairness better than God himself does in the person of Jesus who was slain for you, who knew no sin, but became sin for you that you might be called the righteousness of God in Christ. Humiliated, beaten beyond recognition, submitting to creation, Yahweh God. Oh, and by the way, it's a wonderful read, isn't it, in Isaiah the prophet? He is just not called the Son of God. He is called the very God of all gods, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in verses 6 through 8 here, I think we're reading that, um, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemies, and in the greatness of your excellence, you overthrow those who rise up against you. You send forth your burning anger, and you consume them as chaff. And at the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up, and the flowing waters stood up like a heap. And so this is your God, the one who spoke things into existence, the one who had control over land and sea, and all of these things at his disposal, and all of them directed in specific ways at God's appointed time for God's purposes to be served. All things created by him, and all things were created for him. And they're at his disposal to use. And so people have asked me, and I've had that question posed to me, well, Ron, do you think this, this pandemic that we just have... Uh, uh, kind of gotten through with residuals still around. Um, was, was that a was that a, 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 a judgment of God? And I said, Well, no, I I don't believe so. I'm not quite sure. But God's throne right now is a throne of of grace. But God can use these things, and He does allow things, and so they serve His purposes. So I cannot say, you know, like, like God is up there with a big bull whip and every time his children step out of line, you know, they, they, get, they, get, they get whipped. That's, that's not the posture of God right now. But that is going to be the posture of God one day. But right now, aren't you thankful for his mercy and his patience and his long suffering? They're new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God is long-suffering. He is still bidding people to come, still waiting for people to learn, still people uh, turning. But great tragedy, what man intends for evil, God can use for good. Um, I have my thoughts upon where that virus came from, but I'm not going to go there today. So anyway. So it goes on to say, after verses 6 through 8, that we have a, a, a mighty vast army, a prestigious army, led by Pharaoh, many horses and many chariots, but they were no match for God. Verse number 9 is all the boast of the Egyptian army and the Egyptian uh, forces. And the enemy said, I will pursue and I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be gratified against them and I will draw out my sword, my hand, will destroy them. And let me share with you, as believers, sometimes we fall prey to that mentality that the enemy gets a whole lot more credit than he deserves. He is not the Almighty. He is a servant of your God. And he is the one who has to have permission to come against his people. And he is the one who uh, goes to and fro, the prince of the power of the air, and he, and he is the one who has to go before the throne of God to get permission. And even when he was given permission to come against God's servant Job, you can touch him from head to foot, but his soul, his spirit, is their mind. And Job said, even if the heavens fall, even the stars from heaven fall, yet will I serve him. We must never forget under the onslaughts of the enemy that God fights our battles. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So many Christians are paralyzed in fear. Fear is not from God, folks. 
Fear is not from God. Now, we can be cautious, we can be aware, but we are not to be consumed with the fear that the enemy brings. Why? Because there is no God like your God. And he is the one we need to be concentrating on. How much attention, I said this in, in a sermon months, a couple of months ago, could you imagine if we gave as much attention and time and awareness to who God is and on the throne and not is what we gave to our, to our fear and our anxieties over what has visited the world. You see, the Bible says in this world you will have tribulation. But this same God we're talking about here this morning, our warrior God, Yahweh, he is the same one spoken of in Scripture as the one who said, but wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I have overcome the world. And so we need to, we need to park our car there. We need to pitch our tent there. And we need to give allegiance to the one who is able and the one who is victorious. There is no God like our God. And that's why the Israelites... No wonder saying these words of praise in verses 11 and 12. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who are they? The gods of that day were named by the thousands. But what God is like you, O God? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them up. So much for the mighty army of the Egyptians. Just like that, God proved who he was. Oh, and all that God is, and all you are in the Lord, is at your disposal, by the way. It's at your disposal. Call on the name of the Lord, and he's mighty to save. Call upon the name of the Lord today, this day. And a visitation of his Holy Spirit and all that he provides. Pull yourself up to the table that, that God has set. You, you're struggling with another individual. There's a rift in a family. There's a disunity or, or, or lack of harmony in the church. That's not God's fault. That's because we take our eyes off of God. We believe God for mighty great healings in people's lives, like Victoria that we mentioned to you this morning. And we think that God can't take care of the rest? God is able. Who, oh God, is like you? There's none in the land that is like you. And there, in the book of Exodus also, he said, there shall be no other gods before me. I'm not one in the line of many that you choose from. I am the only God in the room, and I'm your deliverer. I do battle for you. I fight on your behalf. And over and over through the generations, he has delivered his children time and time again. So this passage also, you'll notice with me this morning, it also provides a glorious picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the mighty warrior who came to fight against the enemy of your soul. Talked about that just a moment ago. He did battle for us. He came and he died. He, he was the suffering servant of the cross of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he faced an enemy far more uh, in strength and in, in, uh, in power than the Egyptian army and, and Pharaoh who led them. Jesus dealt with the devil. And you know, you wonder why it seems like the devil rages and things seem more corrupt, and you can just feel it sometimes, can't you? That uh, evil is, is, is dominant, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's been ushered in. It's kind of been released like a, like a dam almost, you know? That's, that's kind of what the tribulation looks like when the spirit or restraint is removed. But let me share with you, God already defeated the devil in Christ Jesus. That's why he rages, that's why he goes as, as the prince of the power of the air, making accusations against God's children. Because he knows that he has to have permission, and his timetable is drawing nigh. And he is going to be put under the foot of God Almighty, and his head is going to be crushed like the snake that he is. By who? Our warrior God. 
And so that day is coming. But he's already defeated. Oh, he thought he defeated Jesus. He thought he defeated God on the cross. Finally dead. All of his followers disillusioned. Everyone in despair. But he forgot who he was dealing with. Jesus said, the resurrection is an event on the calendar as we celebrate it on Easter Sunday morning. I am the resurrection and the life my deliverer God. There is no God like our God. And we need to understand that when we face all of those things and sing the praises such as in verse number one, our deliverer, our great deliverer. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. That horse and that rider that has stood against me has stood in my way. He is hurled into the sea. And that is true of your life as a child of God. All power in heaven and earth has been given to the Son, the one whom we worship, our Redeemer, Savior, and coming King. And so we need to sing his praises. What's that old song, you know? You have a mountain that's too high to climb, a river that's too deep to pass or swim through. There's another part of that too. Well, you know what I mean. So. so Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave, and the devil, completely and gloriously by and through his resurrection. And by way of conclusion this morning, just want to read passage, part of this that we've already read, beginning with verse number 16 terror and dread fall upon them speaking about the enemy by the greatness of your arm they are motionless as stone until your people pass over O Lord until your people pass over whom you have purchased isn't it a beautiful picture here the waters are parted how about in your life has he ever parted the water for you? I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has. Maybe not as uh, an account such as this, but you know, if the Lord hadn't shown up in your life for your salvation, you'd have drowned. We're dead in our trespasses and sin. But isn't, isn't the hand of God a wonderful thing to examine and look at and, 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 and praise him for? They're paralyzed like stone. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Egyptian army. You're going to have your turn in the water. But my people, I've made a way. They're going to pass over on dry ground. Well, you wait a minute. You hold on. You'll have your turn in the pool. So God's people are safe on the other side. Looking back over what just occurred, probably still couldn't get their mind around it. Seeing the walls of water heaped up like a pile on top of each other. Passing through on, on dry ground. And then here comes the army. And they get, they get about to the middle of that sea. And Yahweh, God, who caused all things to exist that exist for his good pleasure, he brought the water back together. And they all perished. Hey, look behind you. The enemy might be pursuing you. The enemy might be coming against you. But keep your eyes on the prize, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on to that which is before you. Sometimes we got our eyes fixed on the, on the, the rear view mirror. It doesn't matter what's going on behind you. God has delivered you from there. Keep your eyes on your deliverer. Keep your eyes on your redeemer. Keep your eyes on the redemption of the Lord. His people passed over. Why? Because they were the people that he purchased. And you will bring them and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. Hey, you, let me share with you this morning. If God saved you, he has begun a good work in you. And he has promised to complete that good work unto the day until Jesus comes again. He doesn't save you and leave you. 
He saves you and delivers you. And he has planted you in his inheritance, in his high mountain, the place the Lord which you have made for your dwelling place, the sanctuary of the Lord which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. And we can praise him because the horse and the rider have been hurled into the deepest sea. He is our deliverer. And all God's children said, amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you not only you will deliver us in this lifetime, but you will deliver us and present us holy and faultless before the throne of grace. An inheritance awaiting us, provided by our great warrior God who fights for us. There is no God like our God. You are the God of very gods, high and lifted up. You are the one worthy to be exalted and praised and honored and glorified. You've done all things well. You redeemed us and you keep us. And one day you'll present us in the presence of your holiness to be accepted only because of your Son, the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you never leave us or forsake us. We thank, us, thank you, Lord, that you have proven yourself over and over and over again, and you challenge us to prove you and to try you and to see if you're not who you say that you are. And over and over again, we, came, we come to the same conclusion that there is no God like our God. And we thank you, Lord, that one day we'll embrace you in that presence of, of holiness. We'll understand the worth of our salvation. We'll receive that inheritance of life eternal, and we shall praise you and worship you forever and ever, worthy as the Lamb, slain before the foundations of the world. I thank you that you did battle with the devil. I thank you that he's already a defeated foe. I thank you, Father, that hell has, has been put in its place. I thank you, Lord, the final enemy, death, one day will be destroyed, and there will never be death again, and there will never be an issue with sin. And Lord, I thank you, it's all because our God fights for us. We love you and we praise you. Dismiss us with your blessing, O oh God. We love you this day, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you, and have a wonderful afternoon.